Welcome, one and all, to the Wonder Awards 2022. In this galaxy-spanning event, we shall go through all the books that won in these awesome categories, going from honorable mentions to flat-out showstoppers. Let us begin. Our first honorable mention for this award show is Daughter of the Deep by Rick Riordan. I enjoyed this book because it was a sort of departure from the standard voice and theme of his other books like Percy Jackson and the King Chronicles. It uses 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea as an inspiration and as a real part of the story, and it did things differently but also took things that I enjoyed from his writing and kept them in. Overall, I just felt new and different from what I'd come to expect from him. Our second to last honorable mention before we move on to the named categories is Scythe by Neil Shusterman. I thought this book's concept was really good and quite unique, and I haven't really seen it anywhere in any books I've read. It's about this futuristic society that's eliminated death, except there's one problem with that, population growth, and for a few reasons, they can't travel out into space, so they need to deal out death themselves. That's where scythes come in. Scythes are these people that have been entrusted to take life from the human race. The scythes are now what causes death, and this book is all about that. This book raises a lot of moral questions, especially around death. Shocker. And it was really quite well written. And also something strange about Scythe is that it feels like a utopia. The world is perfect, pretty much. There's a AI that governs the entire world. Except it almost feels dystopian when you see a lot of the aspects of the Scythe and their Scythe Dome, which is the governing body of the Scythe. I've even called it a dystopian utopia, where it's a utopian world, except there's elements and the themes of the world and story are a lot more dystopian. So death, dystopian, scythe, you know, like that's dystopian, but the world itself, the more, the functional aspect of it is very utopian. Now let's talk about the best sequel of the year. In my opinion, the best sequel I read this year was Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. I would also say the same for the rest of the books in the Stormlight Archive series, because they are all masterpieces. Words of Radiance is good for so many reasons. It expands on the story we got previously, it adds new characters, and all of this just helps further the story. This book is also where you learn more about the magic system of Roshar, and some of the more pivotal things in the series start to happen, though I won't mention them because, you know, spoilers. Each book in the Stormlight Archive sets up things for upcoming books, but also solves mysteries or questions from previous installments, all while keeping a story pace that is quite steady considering the books are 1,000 pages long. I reread some books this year, and so the question for this Wonder Awards is, which one did I enjoy the most? I'm gonna put that down to Percy Jackson by Rick Riordan. Congratulations, Rick, you are the only author with books in two different categories. Sometimes when you reread a book, it's not the same. Either it's not as good, or it's just different. That didn't really happen with Percy Jackson. When I started reading it, I was transported right back to Hamp Half-Blood and Percy's funny internal monologue. It was full of nostalgia when I was reading and I remembered what I was doing and what I was thinking at the time when I first read it, which is something really cool to experience. And though I did notice things that I didn't like, they didn't overshadow the nostalgia and joy I felt reading this book. Overall, I just enjoyed myself so much when I was doing this reread, and I think it wholeheartedly deserves this award. We are now only two awards away from the soon-to-be-revealed final trophy. The Book with the Best Characters award goes to... It's a tie! Although a lot of the books I read this year had great characters, two books stood out above them all. These two books are Restart by Gordon Corman and I Must Betray You by Ruda Seftiz. Both of these books demonstrated characters that felt real to me. I got really attached to them. In I Must Betray You, I really wanted Christian to succeed. I really got attached to his family and especially Buno. Uh, he was really well written as a mentor figure and, well, spoilers, when he dies, it really hits home. Everyone in that story felt like real people all the way, and I wanted them to succeed, I had empathy for them, and the things they were going through, and the characters just felt like living, breathing people. In Restart, the poor kid is how all these things happen around him, He and he starts to realize, oh, I was actually a bad person before I had my concussion and I forgot my past life. Not gonna question the logistics of that, but the concept of a character who can't remember their past and has a complete personality change after 
this memory loss is interesting. I don't think it's an undone trope, I think it's happened before, but it was written really well. I felt empathy for this character and what they were going through, and the reveal of their past and who they were before was really expertly done. Our second to last award before we get on to the final trophy is the best film adaption of a story this year. I am happy to say that this goes to Guillermo del Toro's film Pinocchio. Unfortunately, it's quite common for remakes to be bad. And with all these adaptions of stories we love and care about jetpacking around, there is a lot of potential for them to be bad. However, Gilmero del Toro's Pinocchio is a welcome departure from the standard adaption. It takes the original story and transforms it into something new. It's not Pinocchio, it's Gilmero del Toro's Pinocchio. It's set in Italy during World War I, and the themes are often darker, but there is jovial moments. It makes Pinocchio seem a whole lot more deep than it originally was, and the story really was really well done. And should I also mention that, you know, it was all entirely stop motion, just, you know, a two hour film done with expert stop motion, you know, nothing much at all. Honestly, the stop motion was great. It was really, really great. And I did some research on it, and apparently they tried to do as little of it with CGI. The only parts that were with CGI was the water, because you can't really do that with stop motion. Overall, the story's really good, the characters really meant something to me, the story was really nice, I loved it, and there we are, the best adaption of the year. So now, with that out of the way, I think it's time we get serious and get to the final trophy. The grand trophy of this event. Come with me. Now, here we are at the final award. The final trophy of this event. This award is not for the best book of the year, as you might have been expecting. No. It is the book I enjoyed reading the most. The book I had the most fun with. I read so many books this year, and... I enjoyed a lot of them. However, there was one book that I found myself laughing, smiling, crying at the entire way through. The book that I got excited about every time I wanted to read it and that I kept picking up over and over again. This book, or series should I say, is Wax and Wayne by Brandon Sanderson. This series, which consists of Alloy of Law, Shadows of Self, Bands of Warning, and The Lost Metal, is the second era of Mistborn. I love Mistborn, and when I started reading this, I was skeptical. I've read sequel series in the past, they haven't always been good. I was wrong to be skeptical. Mistborn Era 2, or the Wax and Wayne series, is a Wild West take on Mistborn. It's 300 years later, in a slightly close to modern era. The magics of the world have evolved with the times, as has the world building and the technology. Our main duo, Wax and Wayne, have such good dynamics with each other. Their banter, the way they play off each other, is really well written, and super funny at a lot of times. The other characters are also really well written. By the time I reached book four, I was super attached to them, and I got to know them so well. Book one, they were, they were just strangers. Book four, I felt like I knew them. I think one of the other reasons this book is really good and isn't a bad sequel series is because it doesn't try to do the same thing Mistborn did. It tries to be its own thing, and that might have played into why I enjoyed it so much. Though there were things I maybe disliked a little bit about it, that is not what this award is for. It's for the book I enjoyed the most, and I think by far this book wins this trophy. Congratulations, Wax and Wayne by Brandon Sanderson. I present to you the Wonder Awards 2022 Trophy. Here you are. Thank you for coming out. Alright, that shall wrap up this award show. Let's congratulate Wax and Wayne and all the other books on this list and every single book this year for all the amazing work and creativity that was poured into them. Let's give them a hand, shall we? Very good, now that's enough. Thank you for watching this award show. There'll be another award show next year in 2023. But until then, there'll be lots of Cadence Wonder Workshop content to sate your hunger. However, until then, goodbye. Do you want to write books that can win this trophy? Well, I made a video about world building, which is one of the main things that I liked about Wax and Wayne. You can watch that video. It's right over there. Maybe someday your book will be on this list.